Today I'd like to put a little tick uh, under the microscope. I'm now walking um, along the edge of a forest. It's a beautiful meadow here where I'm walking. Um, it is a very nice uh, field, but it is not entirely free of danger because uh, there are many ticks uh, on this field. And uh, during the last uh, few days, um, I found uh, several of them uh, crawling. Uh, we do a tick check um, every uh, night before we go to bed. And I have, as a matter of fact, found several of them, um, three of them, as a matter of fact, and one of them started to suck some of the blood. Um, these ticks are uh, known to carry uh, diseases. Uh, there is a so-called tick-borne encephalitis, which is a virus infection. There's also a borreliosis, which is a bacterial uh, yeah, pathogen. And uh, so, therefore, these ticks are not very, um, yeah, they're not very nice, uh, nice animals in that sense, because they can cause some problems. Uh, in any case, today I'd like to put uh, one of the ticks that I caught uh, under the microscope and um, it was quite kind of fascinating to see that you can also see the movement of uh, their organs. So let's uh, get started. Yeah, so basically what I'm going to do now is uh, these ticks uh, are best uh, yeah, put under the microscope because uh, um, otherwise they have absolutely no use for us. Well, um, the first thing I did is I placed a drop of Eupural Mounting Medium. Uh, that is uh, one of my more favorite ones. Um, I placed uh, this drop of Mounting Medium on the slide. Um, and then I tried to place the live tick into the mounting medium. So it was not so easy because the tick uh, actually was uh, clinging to the plastic container. Um, and then I tried to invert the container to get it out. And then out came the dead tick uh, from the day before. Um, uh, and the other one is still uh, still in there in the container. So I had uh, some problems getting it out. And what I did is I dipped uh, the tweezers into the mounting medium to make it sticky. Um, and then I touched the back of the tick and then it stuck uh, to the tweezers. And then I could uh, place it directly into the mounting medium. And yeah, that's what I'm trying right now. I tried to push it into the mounting medium, but uh, this didn't quite work very well. So I decided to put another drop of mounting medium on top of the tick. This is uh, kind of important to this step uh, that it's completely um, surrounded by mounting medium. Otherwise we have too many air bubbles. Yeah, and that's uh, basically how it looks like. And then of course I placed a cover glass on, on top uh, of the tick. And then I also had to press it flat a little bit because uh, otherwise uh, the specimen is too thick. Yeah, and uh, you can see that uh, this also kind of spreads the legs of the tick a little bit. Because the dry tick from the day before, uh, because it was dried, it, uh, its legs were kind of retracted. Um, so and therefore it's not so, uh, you, they cannot be seen as nicely. Uh, but uh, in a live tick, uh, the legs are spread apart also because uh, the cells are still moist, I think. Uh, and this is the reason why um, it works best like this. Yeah, and then I saw that it started to move a little bit um, and uh, it actually was still alive. And this is now a, a time lapse um, and it was uh, actually moving the legs uh, quite vigorously. So um, I decided to then uh, put everything under the microscope and uh, yeah. Sure enough, it still continued to move um, under the microscope, of course. You do see a couple of uh, these round air bubbles. Um, and uh, this is a bright field image and this means that the background is uh, white and the tick itself is, is uh, dark. Um, so um, the organs can barely be seen. Um, so I, tr I tried to actually use a higher magnification now. And this also changed the exposure a little bit and then I could actually look into the tick and, and I could see the organs are moving. And by the way, something new is, is on the uh, lower left uh, corner you see a scale bar. I calibrated the optics and now I included um, a scale bar. So just as a side, uh, piece of side information because I've not done this before. Um, and yeah, you could see actually the, the movement of the organs. I don't know if this is some kind of heart. Um, and those dark red uh, structures, I think maybe, I'm not an expert on ticks here, but maybe these are the, actually the, the parts that actually contain uh, the blood. Yeah, and that's the abdominal part, the, the hind part of, of the tick. And you can see that uh, the organs are, are moving, uh, they're contracting and expanding. So I think that this is maybe the sucking motion of the tick uh, to actually draw blood in. Um, I, I can imagine. I'm not quite sure about this, but I think that's a quite a plausible explanation. 
Yeah, um, it was a little bit difficult also to get these pictures uh, because I had to adjust the exposure uh, quite well. Um, and if um, with a yet higher magnification, um, the depth of field is already quite low. And I don't know if this is the heart that's kind of pumping there. Um, I don't even know exactly um, what the other organs are. But uh, in any case, um, what we have is uh, a quite a nice uh, time lapse again of uh, the organs uh, moving. So the next uh, clip here, this uh, shows that the central part um, is uh, light, bright, and the rest is dark. This is a Köhler illumination. So I closed the field diaphragm a little bit. And this is a dark field. Um, so I included a dark field patch stop. And this dark field patch stop gives you a dark background and you can see that the tick or the object, the specimen is brighter. It's actually quite uh, easily done. You have to just make yourself a, a patch stop and insert it into the filter holder. So, yeah, and uh, the tick was still moving <laughs> half an hour later. And last, I just wanted to show you, this is now a still image, uh, which I stitched together of several smaller images. So it's a photograph, it's not a video. And uh, yeah, it looks quite, uh, quite nice. Uh, and I used uh, a panorama software uh, to combine the, the, the images. And then I said, well, actually, it doesn't look scary enough. So I simply inverted uh, the, the image a little bit. And uh, this now uh, shows you the tick uh, white on dark background. It's simply a negative image. OK, so there's nothing, uh, no specific microscopic techniques here. At the beginning of this video, I said that ticks are absolutely no good for us. And the only thing that they're maybe good for is, is to be put under the microscope. Um, I, I think I don't even agree with my own statement anymore, I have to admit. Um, so I want to qualify this a little bit because ticks do fulfill several important purposes. And I want to talk about these. Um, of course, uh, biodiversity in itself is uh, a value in itself, I think. And ticks themselves are also themselves they are a host for a variety of other microorganisms and I as a biologist of course value biodiversity as a yeah for itself. Uh, the second uh, reason why I think ticks are quite useful or can be seen as useful is because they serve as food. They serve as food for other animals like birds for example. And the third reason is uh, well, um, ticks are important. I mean, there are parasites, uh, so they harm their hosts, but this is important for population control. Um, and uh, so they are part of our um, ecosystem, they're part of our environment, um, they are alive, therefore they should be treated, of course, with respect. Uh, so I did have uh, some second thoughts about directly putting the tick um, into the mounting medium. I also have to admit that. But I think for educational purposes, this was uh, justified. And last but not least, uh, there is another reason, and that's a philosophical reason. I think one should not always evaluate uh, or judge uh, things on whether they have a value uh, for us. Um, certain things simply have a value in themselves, and I consider ticks, just like many other organisms, as very fascinating. And with that, I wish you a nice day and happy microbe hunting.